Hello, it's Stat 135, Lecture 7. Last time we began Section 8.5 on the MLE. So remember that the MLE involves having n uh, copies of a random variable with joint density fx1 to xn given theta. And so we can think of these, uh, these xi as being fixed numbers from your data and theta is being a variable. So that gives us a likelihood function of theta that we want to choose that theta that maximizes um, this likelihood. So the way to think about it is, is like you're finding the theta such that the density um, best matches your data. So in the case where x1 to xn is iid, we're actually looking at the log likelihood. Now, today we're gonna to do two things. We're gonna quickly look at some examples of MLE and then spend most of our time talking about properties of the MLE, namely equivariance and consistency. So uh, imagine that your X1 to Xn are IID exponential. So it's just really a straightforward process. You're taking the log likelihood, you're taking the derivative, you're solving um, an equation set to zero for um, for the maximum likelihood estimate, and we see we get the same as the mom estimate in this case. Another example here, uh, again, single parameter. So we find the log likelihood, set the derivative equal to zero, and now we find that we get a MLE estimate that's different than the mom estimate. Uh, take a look at the gamma distribution. This has two parameters. This one's a complicated example for a number of reasons. We have two parameters. So the function that, we're, that we want to maximize um, is a function of both lambda and, and alpha. And so we have to take partial derivatives, set them equal to zero, solve that system of equations and it comes down to a single equation here involving alpha and um, all involving uh, our parameter in a way, uh, our single parameter alpha hat, but in a way that we can't solve for explicitly enclosed form. So, uh, but we can do this using numerical um, methods and so for that, we're going to use R. So as an example, uh, on B courses as an in-class exercise, I have data on rainfall that follows a gamma distribution. And uh, most optimiza optimization problems want you to have some initial values. So I'm going to use our mom estimate. Our mom estimate, remember, uh, for gamma involves their functions of the first and second sample moments. So I've used R to compute those from my data and the function I want now. So this optimization pro um, program looks for the minimum of, of your surface. And um, we, uh, we want to find uh, the maximum. So uh, I'm just taking minus the log likelihood instead of the log likelihood. The, the method that is used is Newton's method. So, um, so my, my surface that I want to find the, the minimum of, it converts that to a, a, a using gradient to another surface um, corresponding you know, to the derivative, which you want to set equal to zero. So we're essentially finding the, the roots or the zeros of this, um, of this gradient. And, and for that, it, uh, we use Newton's method. So uh, outspits the ML estimates, which you can then see is close but different than the mom estimates. For details on optim, uh, you can type question mark optim in your console. You can use this, this example as, uh, as a template for your homework. Now, uh, the equivariance property of, the, of MLE is extremely important. What it says is that if you have an MLE estimate of theta and G some function, any function, not necessarily monotonic, 
then the ML estimate for g of theta is simply g of theta hat. So easy. So for example, if x is Bernoulli theta, um, the variance of x is theta times 1 minus theta, a function of, of theta, g of theta. And um, we want to find, let's say, the ML estimate for the variance. So, so what we're going to do then is uh, using the equivariance property, we just know that it right away it's just theta hat times 1 minus theta hat. Let's see this in a picture. So what we're really doing here is we, we have a change of variable. Um, instead, of, instead of our likelihood function being a function of theta, we're going to have a likelihood function a function of phi, where now phi is g of theta, in this case theta times 1 minus theta. If theta runs between 0 and 1, phi runs between 0 and a quarter. Okay, so I've, I've attempted to, to make the picture here of the likelihood with x uh, um, being equal to 1. So that's just the diagonal line. And so, uh, so what we have here in this picture is a coordinate system, theta running from 0 to 1, and then g of theta, also known as phi, running from 0 to a quarter. So, lovely. So, um, how are we going to define, how are we going to define the likelihood uh, of phi? Well, uh, so obviously um, the likelihood of phi, where phi is a quarter, what we should do is we'll just uh, go backwards according to g. g of a half is a quarter, so, so the inverse of, of a quarter is a half under g, um, and then we just go up to then we just go up to the log likelihood, and that is um, the likelihood of phi. So, so our our method is that we just um, we just follow we look at the pre image under g of phi, and then look at the the likelihood value for that pre image. Now the problem is if the pre image has more than one point in it, then which value do we choose? And the answer to that is we're going to choose whichever value results in a higher likelihood. So, so for example, um, phi, when phi is zero, the likelihood of, of zero, phi is zero, um, should be, should be, uh, should be one. So what we want to do is, so zero, so it's going to be the max of the likelihood when theta is 0 and the likelihood when theta is 1. So the likelihood when theta is 0 is 0, the likelihood when theta is 1 is 1. So, so the likelihood of phi equals 0 should be 1. So a way to write that more generally is the likelihood of phi is the soup of the, um, of the likelihood of theta for all those theta that come from phi. In other words, the pre-image of, of phi. So, so, uh, so now, what phi is the likelihood of phi as large as possible? Well, so let's let, um, let's let phi hat be g of theta hat. So that, that should be perfectly make sense to you. Um, I want to find which phi uh, gives me the largest likelihood. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to find whichever theta gives me the largest likelihood. And then once I find that theta, that's theta hat, I just look at the pre-image of that theta hat under g. Um, and that is what phi hat is. Bang, right? So, uh, so then... Um, phi hat is theta hat times 1 minus theta hat. Uh, theta hat, remember, is x. So that's x, 1 minus x. And for us, x was 1. So, 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 uh, so our ML estimate under phi is 0. That makes total sense. So now the consistency 
is the next property, and this is generally beyond the scope of the course, but it's really important that you understand um, the, the main idea here. So we saw consistency with mom estimates. Of course, consistency means convergence under probability of your, of your estimate to the true parameter. Um, but unlike mom here, we have, um, when we say our estimate, we have a function in mind, our likelihood function, which this estimate is um, maximizing. So, so, so it's important to have a picture in your head um, what's going on when I write this, and it's important for you to understand that it's not always going to work. So consistency is not always true for ML estimates. Um, you usually have to consider what are called regularity conditions that I'll point out to you here and why they're important. So, so here's the task, okay? Um, I need to define a function for which theta hat is going to maximize. And I need to define another function um, of which theta zero, the true parameter, is going to maximize. And then I need to show that the, that, that the function um, that is maximized by the ML estimate converges to, to this other function. So in this picture down here, the ln theta converges to the L of theta. Um, that's what's going to happen here. So, so we need to assume that, that we have IID. So that's, that's the first regularity condition. We have a log likelihood. So log likelihood is basically a sum of like log likelihoods, right? Uh, for each of our data um, points. And, and I'm going to define ln of theta to be the average of, of those log likelihoods, okay? And it should be clear that that's also going to be maximized by theta hat, since I'm just dividing by n. Now, um, I need another function. So this other function is I'm going to take the expectation of, of the likelihood function. So the expectation of the likelihood function um, is with respect to the true uh, true parameter. Um, I've shown its definition here. That is a function of theta. And so something that I need to be true about my my densities is one, that, um, that theta zero uh, maximizes um, this, this expected, um, our expect, so, so the expectation of, of these densities. You can think of the expectation of the densities as like the average, the true average density, where I'm taking the average over all the different data values x that I could get. So, so, so that expectation, um, this is some function of theta and it's maximized by theta zero. And so um, the other condition that I need is that the ln theta converges to L of theta. So these two functions converge to one another, which um, just follows from the weak law of large numbers. If you think about it, I have an average that's converging to the expectation. That's exactly what the weak law of large numbers is. So when is that true? There are three conditions. Quite simply, you need theta zero to be an interior point in your parameter space. You need the log likelihood to be differentiable and to have a unique max. So when our four regularity conditions are true, our two functions are going to converge to one another um, as, as the sample size gets large. Uh, and, and hence, the, the, the um, theta values that maximize those two functions are going to converge. Bang. So I hope you guys have a really awesome weekend. You deserve it.